Yo, yo, what's going on? Y'all, your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon review. And today, in this Help Me Devon review, I'll be showing you guys the last EQ I think you'll ever need. And when I say that, this is what I mean. You already have that Fab Filter Pro Q3 in your arsenal. You have that Mick DSP EQ in your arsenal. You have all of these amazing EQs at your disposal that do all kinds of crazy and amazing things. But there's one EQ that I know for sure you don't have. What if I told you that we've created an EQ that speaks your language? Yes, we speak with EQ in terms of hertz, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But we usually speak in terms of uh, actual actionable language. For instance, if someone says, I'm looking to get rid of the mud, I want more air, I want more clarity, I want to darken this. All of those words are related sometimes to specific frequency ranges. So what if we took EQ and translated that into language, strictly just knobs with words that you can understand, move faster, and make better and healthier decisions along the way? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the HMD Rosetta EQ from Help Me Devon, Yours Truly. Now, before I get really deep into what this thing is and what it does and the philosophy and things, the philosophy and things like that, let me just show you what it can do. Let's open up a vocal and let's have some fun. Okay, so right now I'm gonna play your vocal. Check this out. You and I are not the same. Yeah, I'm feeling like you out of my league. Yeah, baby girl, I can't play with you. Ain't nobody. Cool. So you heard the vocal. That's just compression. A little bit of auto tune coming in. That's it. Dry vocal. Just some compression and some auto tune. Let me try to clean up this vocal using the Rosetta EQ. You and I are not the same. Yeah. I'm feeling like you out of my league. Yeah. Baby girl, I can't play with you. Ain't nobody with me. All you gotta do is stay. And I can show you what I'm worth. And if you decide I'm not worth it. You and I are not the same, yeah. I'm feeling like you out of my league, yeah. Baby girl, I can't play with ya. Ain't nobody with me. All you gotta do is stay. Uh, and I can show you what I'm worth. And if you decide I'm not worth your time. You and I are not the same, yeah. I'm feeling like you out of my league, yeah. Baby girl, I can't play with ya. Ain't nobody with me. All you gotta do is stay. Uh, and I can show you what I'm worth. You and I are not the same. Yeah. Now, let's bypass that back and forth and get an idea of what just happened. Listen closely. Without first. You and I are not the same. Yeah. I'm feeling like you out of my league. Yeah. Baby girl, I can't play with you. Ain't nobody with me. All you gotta do is stay. Uh, and I can show you what I'm worth. And if you decide I'm not worth your time. Huge difference. Now, let's play that with some music and let's get an idea of what it sounds like before and after. You and I are not So, with some music, check this out. Without first. You and I are not the same. Yeah. I'm feeling like you out of my league. Yeah. Baby girl, I can't play with you. Ain't nobody with me. All you gotta do is stay. I can show you what I'm worth. And if you decide I'm not worth your time. Quick, easy, efficient. I made those decisions. Now, one thing you may be saying to yourself, Devon, where are the meters on this EQ? Well, that was a part of our philosophy. We didn't want to put any meters on this EQ. Why? Because we want to force you to use your ears, not your eyes. You have all of these EQs and all of these tools at your disposal with analyzers. Back in the day, a lot of these engineers didn't have that liberty or that, uh, 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 you know, that grace to have that. So we're, I'm trying to bring it back to a place where we're just using our ears. Another thing you'll notice on this EQ is that we don't have units of measure of dB. You'll notice right here, for instance, under the bite knob, that is 0.16. Now, what does that mean? Is that one dB? Is that two dB? Well, it's not any of those things. And the reason why is because some of us get caught up in those bad habits of saying, well, I usually boost three dB on that or four dB here, not on this. You're gonna use strictly your ears. You're gonna make decisions that are healthier, that are more uh, 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 sound and just more intentional as opposed to just doing the typical things that you do all the time. This EQ is gonna help you break these bad habits and I'm so excited to show you this thing and let me show you what this thing can do on everything in your thing. From mixes, from guitars to bass to kicks, watch this guys. Okay, so that's what it did to a vocal for the most part. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on over here to a drum section, and I'm gonna let you hear the drums for what it is. These are the drums. Cool, those are some drums. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with this drum a little bit. Let's say, for instance, that we feel like this drum needs a little bit more air. Let's liven the drum up just a little bit. Like, let's just give it a little bit more life. Let's try that right quick with the additive side of our EQ. Let's turn it down some so we're get level matching so it's not deceiving you. Now let's bypass it back and forth. And that quickly, we just liven the drums up just a little bit. And what did we do? We literally asked ourselves questions as we were going. I was strictly using my ears and I said these things. I said to myself, hmm, I want some more warmth out of this drum. So I boosted warmth. I said, I do want a little bit more bottom as well to give me some more of that low end. I boosted the bottom. I wanted more presence. I wanted a little more bite. I literally was speaking to myself, asking myself the question, well, what am I looking for? And this helped me gain that sound to liven it up a lot more. So I'm gonna put this back to his default setting. And now we're gonna roll on over to a guitar. And the beautiful thing about this guitar is I'm gonna show you more of the subtractive side. Now, one thing to explain with this EQ is there's two sides to this EQ, one additive, one subtractive. Very easy to understand. One is boosting, one is strictly subtracting and taking away. Let's go on over to the subtractive side and listen to this guitar. Check this guitar out. Now, let's just manipulate this guitar. Let's say, for instance, we want to get rid of some of the mud on this guitar and cut some of the lows. Let's try that out. Let's bypass that back and forth and say, for instance, our goal was to get this out of the way of the bass line, which we said, oh, well, this guitar felt a little bit muddy. Let's cut out some of those lows using the low cut and go from there. So bypass it back and forth. Check this out without first. Simple. Now, one other special knob that I'm gonna show you guys on this EQ is the tuck feature. And what the tuck feature does is something remarkable, but so simple. Remember, there is no saturation or things of that nature on this plugin. There are things that kind of model the style of saturation using EQ, but this is just strictly EQ. No secrets to this whole thing at all. Tuck. Sometimes you may say to yourself, Dang, this particular sound source is just sitting a little too high up above the B. Well, you can come on over to this tuck knob with vocals, with guitars, any sound source that you have and increase this uh, tuck knob to bring this back in the song. Now for this tuck knob, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my bandwidth style to extreme. Yes, this EQ still has the ability for you guys to change the bandwidth, but in a very simple way, as opposed to going to your EQ and hitting Q and making the, the uh, actual bandwidth narrow or wide, you literally can come down here to the Rosetta EQ and hit extreme, balance, or surgical. Surgical is more narrow, balance is a little bit wider, and extreme is a much wider sound. Now, what I suggest is when it comes to instruments uh, or synths and things, of that nature, I like to go for the more broader uh, EQ. So I'm gonna use the broader EQ and show you what this tuck knob does. Check this out. It's gonna feel like the guitar falls back in a mix. Like the guitar just kind of went way back in the mix. It's interesting. I'm gonna bypass it back and forth. Check this out without.
basically, if you ever have a sound source that you felt like is above that beat, just a little too much, you could take the tuck knob and you could basically just pull back in that specific frequency range, which is around that 800 hertz range that we're using for our tuck knob. And this works amazing with vocals. If, you're, if your vocal seems like it's sitting a little too high above the beat and you wanna bring it back in a mix, that tuck knob is ridiculous. Try that tuck knob out. All right, next thing I'm gonna show you, which I feel like you guys are probably like, I wanna hear it, is this thing on an 808. So check this out. This is an 808. Let's do some boosting on an 808. All right, let's bypass that monster back and forth. Check out what it did. And of course, make sure you always level match. And what you may be thinking is that I'm doing these large moves, when really I made sure that the EQ is not even doing super significant boosts like 30 dB of whatever frequency range. I made it so that even when you're boosting, it's not doing extreme, extreme amount of increases. Yes, to some, maybe 15 dB max on some of these knobs is extreme, but for the most part, you're using your ears. And this is why I got rid of the dB and got rid of the meters, because I want you to just strictly use your ears, level match things, and call it a day. Okay. So something also cool on the subtractive side is the darken feature. And the beautiful thing about the darken feature is the darken feature allows you to basically uh, roll off the high end. It works as a low pass, letting the lows through. Check out what it sounds like. Now I can get really creative and say, use the darken knob to throw that down and just use that and increase the warmth. I can do some really sick stuff with that. Let's move on. So I feel like you're getting the picture. Of course, this works with kicks, uh, which it's it's pretty self-explanatory when you use it with the uh, bass lines and stuff like that. How about we try it on the mix bus? So let's try that. I'm gonna go on over to here. I'm gonna move from here. And let's try this mix bus out. Let's just try to increase or enhance our mix bus. Pretty much we finished our mix and we want to just enhance what's there already. Let's try it out. Okay, do you like to bring up my past when you making decisions? Remember when we started this, no, please don't let it finish. We really think it's better out there for you. I'm the only one that can afford you, baby, cause it's giving no commitment. Let's bypass that back and forth without first. Okay, do you like to bring up my past when you making decisions? Remember when we started this? No, please don't let it finish. We really think it's better out there for you. I'm the only one that can afford you, baby, cause. Listen to how we shaped the bottom and listen to how we added all these cool nuances as well as getting rid of some of the harshness that we had in it that I was hearing. We also limited some of the S's and T's sibilance frequencies, which we went on over to our cleverly named S's and T's knob, which basically is attacking the frequencies in that 8,000 hertz range to get rid of some of those S's and T's. We made this knob very subtle because we didn't want it to really alter your sound too much, but really get rid of the part of the S's and T's sibilance that really hurts and strikes you. So you'll still get that smooth uh, high end of those S's and T's, but it's rolling off or basically it's cutting uh, out a lot of that specific frequency range that really hurts you in that sibilance high range. It's very interesting. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I just want to show you a few creative things about this entire piece. Long story short. Uh, when it comes to uh, the low cut knob and things of that nature, this is literally just a high pass filter. So this is literally just cutting the lows, simple language that you can understand uh, and just go through. So if I go right here to Mix Bus, I'll show you what low cut does. Okay, do you like to bring up my past when you making decisions? Remember when we started this, no please don't let it finish. Great, now I'll show you Darken. Okay, do you like to bring up my past when you now, check out this harshest knob. 
Okay, do you like to bring up my past when you making decisions? Remember when we started this? No, please don't let it finish. We really think it's better out there for you. Here, when I took it off, that you felt that harshness kind of rage right through. But when I had it engaged, you noticed that, oh, it felt a little bit easy on our ears. Powerful button for vocals, just to give you a heads up. There will also be a manual attached to it so that you guys can actually get an idea of what each knob is doing. Now, the very last thing I'll show you is this enhance knob. And I know some of you may be like, what the heck is this enhance knob dub? Long story short, all this enhance knob does is it's a slight dB boost in six of my favorite frequency ranges. Now, why did we implement this button? It's more of a creative button. It's kind of like creating somewhat of a tube saturation. It's not saturation, it's not adding any harmonics, just a note, but it's boosting very key frequencies or my favorite frequencies that I find myself going to a lot that I like to increase to give me an overall cooler sound. This is an experimental knob, uh, and it's just that. If you look in the manual, it'll tell you specifically more in-depth things about it, but I'm just gonna show you what it is for the sake of this video. Okay, so let's go to the mix bus, or basically just play a two track and let's see what we can get out of it. So I'm gonna bring it back to the default. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the enhance knob on and off as this mix is playing. Check out what it does, without first. You making decisions Remember when we started this No, please don't let it finish We really think it's better Out there for you I'm the only one I can afford you Baby, cause very interesting. And what it's doing is it's boosting six specific frequency ranges that are fixed, uh, maybe about two to three dB. Now this goes for anything. Uh, even when it comes to pads, uh, one thing I will note is I like when I use pads or use this on pads or synths and things of that nature and instruments to use different bandwidth styles as far as extreme. I really like extreme on it. Now, a lot of people may be saying to themselves this about the EQ. Is this EQ really teaching me how to EQ? My belief and my philosophy? Yeah, because at the end of the day, this EQ is teaching you a language. It's translating it to you. It's communicating with you. And one thing I really want people to understand about this EQ is this EQ is going to teach you how to communicate. Long story short, when an artist, when an engineer, when anyone comes to you and asks you for specific desires in their music and they say, well, I want less of this or more of that, they're saying words like air, they're saying clarity, they're saying bright, they're saying darken, they're saying muddy. Let's put that in an EQ. This is not trying to get you to stay away from learning how to use EQ, but rather how to make you use or make better decisions when you're using the EQ. No meters. No dB range units uh, of measure for you to actually go to and constantly keep going back to. This EQ is going to force you to use your ears if you are an expert. This EQ, if you are a beginner, is going to teach you the language that you learn when you see the word clarity. You're going to go in a manual and say, well, I love using the clarity. What range is that boosting? You never even ask yourself that question for the most part when it comes to beginning at this. What range do I go to for clarity? Well, this EQ is going to show you and give you good habits first and then give you the ability to learn whatever you want to learn after. I think this is one of EQ that we've created that is giving you more than just a tool, but rather it's teaching you something. This is a teaching EQ. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's available right now at helpmedevon.com. I would really appreciate if you guys support it and grab it. It took us almost two years to make this plugin. I'm super proud of it, of the team, for helping us put this together, and all of you guys for supporting me in this journey so that we could invest in something like this. Well, that was my tutorial, or, or excuse me, review on the Help Me Devon Rosetta EQ. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram, and also make sure you join our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself. I really hope you guys enjoy that, and real, from the bottom of my heart, I don't want to get emotional, but... uh. Thank you guys so much for everything that you've given me in my life. And um, here's something for you guys. Until next time, you guys.